afternoon, uh, iCloners. Uh, this is the second part in our series of using physics constraints on props for easy animation. Um, the first one, we looked at the punching bag using a simple hinge constraint. Um, in this one, we're going to look at a carnival swing, and I'm going to use a general constraint um, to make the swing, uh, the swing swing out. Um, the swing itself will be composed of basically three columns, uh, which will then spin, and then four, uh, we're going to use just simple boxes for the swings themselves. Um, and then there'll be a constraint on each one of the swings. Uh, to get started, I'm going to load in a, a figure um, for, so that we can get the, the sizes correct, basically. Uh, always my favorite here, um, if I can find him. Uh, G5, I believe, G5 characters. I always am a huge fan of Chuck, so I'm going to pop Chuck into my scene. And then we're going to just load in a box, which is going to become the swing seat. Okay, and we can find the box under props, oops, template, uh, 3D blocks, scroll down, we'll grab that box. Okay. And now we're going to size this box so that it can sit like a seat. About like that. Should be good. We'll pull it up a little bit. About there. That should be fine. Now I'm going to position Chuck into a seated position. Edit the motion. I'm gonna grab his butt. Set them down like so. That works for me. And now I'm going to position him on my swing seat. Like that. Take a look at it. That looks pretty good to me. He's a little high off the ground. If you ever found a swing that high, it would be a, a little bit difficult to get yourself seated in it. So, you know, just so that we can a little more realistic. Let's lower it down a little bit. About like that. That's not so bad. Okay. Now, the modeling of the actual uh, prop in the end, I did in Blender, and I'll show you the actual prop. It looks a lot better than, obviously, just a box. But for our purposes, as we, we develop this, this prop, we're just going to use very basic, um, very basic 3D blocks. So there we have our seat. And now I'm going to create the top of the swing. And I'm just going to use some of these cylinders. I'm not going to use the perfectly round one. Uh, the round one's hard to see as it rotates. So we're going to use a multi-sided cylinder. Um, this one will be fine. Six-sided cylinder. And we're going to flatten it out a little bit because it's going to be the top. And we're going to make it bigger. That should be probably pretty good for us. It's pretty big. Okay, that's solid. And then, as long as I'm here, oh, by the way, should have done this before, but I'm gonna do it now. Um, let's go ahead and link Chuck to his seat. Dun, dun, dun. Can't attach him, because he's a uh, character, but we can link him. We'll go into the scene, it's this box one. Let's change the name so that we don't get, um, so we don't get confused. We're gonna call it seat one if I could spell, and we'll call this swing top. Okay. And now, Chuck is linked to seat one. Very nice. So now I can just grab seat one and I'm going to want to move it over about here. That'll work. In the end, we'll, uh, we'll make at least four. We might make even more. Um, that's very easy to do. Once we get the one swing working how we want it, we can simply um, copy and paste or, yeah, and all the work will be done for us. So once we get the first one working, everything else will flow quite fast. Okay, so let's grab the top of our swing, swing top. We're going to raise it up about there. Okay, and now I'm going to create two more columns, which will be the... Uh, the arm of the swing and then the base of the swing. Okay, so again, I'm going to use the six-sided column. 
build it up. And now to add another one, I'm just going to control. I'm going to change it to the um, to the arrow control, and it makes me another one. And we're going to shrink it down a little bit, but make it tall. So there we go. We'll even go through the top. It doesn't matter for now. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to name these. This will be our swing arm. Again, if I could uh, type correctly. And this will be our swing base. Okay. Swing arm will attach to the swing base. And swing top will attach to the swing arm. Groovy. Now, go back to my seat one. And now I'm going to look at the physics of it. I'm going to activate the physics. Dynamic is fine in this case. He falls, uh, but that's, that's okay for now. The other thing that's going to be needed to have physics turned on is the swing top. Um, you cannot use a constraint attaching to something that's not uh, physics enabled. So we'll go to our swing top, activate the physics. We're going to use kinematic in this instance. Now we'll go into, go to the seat, select the seat, scroll down until we hit the uh, add constraint. Now, in the past, I've used a couple of ways of doing this. I've used um, the, what is this one called, the cone twist. Um, but more recently, uh, as I practiced for this little tutorial, I used the generic constraint. And it has a benefit that I saw for this one. So let's, let's use the, the generic constraint. And you see that little blue, I'll show you, the blue spike. It's showing you where you're attaching it on the, the prop, right? So you kind of want to get it onto the top. If you don't, it's fine. We can move it later. See it right between his legs there. Okay. We'll zoom in. And let's try and get it to the middle of this prop. Like so. That looks pretty good on the middle. Now we're going to raise it up towards the top of the swing where it would be attached. You don't have to go all the way. In fact, I'm not going to go all the way, but you can. You can get close. That should be fine right there. Okay, so this constraint <clears throat> is, um, is attached to our seat. Right now, the target is the world. We're going to change that target to the swing top. Okay, and let's see if he falls now. Nope. Because it's attached to the swing top, or even if it was, uh, even if the target was the world, that constraint is going to hold up the seat, which was a dynamic, um, doo -doo -doo -doo, which was set to dynamic under the physics. It normally would have dropped. Once I add the constraint, the constraint is actually holding it. Now the constraint is attached to the swing top. If the swing top moves, this constraint will move with it. Okay, and let's let's do that now. Remember, I have this structure where the base of the uh, the base of the swing, the arm is connected to the base, the top is connected to the arm. So all I have to do is move the base, and I'm going to go forward in my timeline. We have a 30 second timeline. Let's add 20 seconds of rotation. Uh, and so I moved forward to the 20 second and 50, 20.5. I just grab the rotation, and I'm going to spin it a little bit. I'm going to spin it a little bit more, something like that. If you want, you can go into your uh, into here. We could set it something even, 1500. And let's see what that looks like. Uh oh, and look at that. He's already moving with that with that top. But he looks like he's quite strapped in, right? And that's fine. We're gonna fix that in a minute. Okay. So we don't see a lot of physics happening with it. Let's go back. That, that's not bad, though, um, on, the, on the timing of that kind of swing. So go into the generic constraint. We're going to scroll down to our uh, rotation limits, I believe. And let me see if I can remember this. If we free up the X and Y, let's see what happens if we free up the X. Oh, by the way, here it's locked. Here we have it. Uh, you add a limit where you want it to be. And here is totally free, uh, unconstrained. 
Okay, so just doing the X, let's see what happens. This is on the rotation. Okay. Let's free up the Y. Okay, now we're starting to look good, right? Now he's swinging out to the side. Now notice he's, strangely, the character is, um, see how he's falling through the box? Now that doesn't happen. We're in real time right now. If we change it to by frame, um, that's going to look a little better. The swing comes to a stop and he slows down. But he's spinning a little bit, which is a little weird. Do we, uh, in most cases, swings like this may not swing like that. Um, let's see. What happens if we free up all three? All right. And he's swinging out. Okay. If I undo this one, keep it locked. What happens if we keep those two locked? Okay, he remains facing front, swings out to the side, but notice he's not falling behind, I don't believe. Let's see what happens. Yeah, so he's not swinging back and forth in this case, and I think I want him to be swinging back and forth, so I'm going to put the X back on. Let's check it again. You see how he fell back a little bit ways there? Okay, let me change this to by frame. Now now see how he's much more pos better positioned on his seat when you run it by frame. It's, it's going to look a little weird, but when you render it, it will render like it looks on the by frame. It's a little strange that at the end he's doing the swinging. I'm not sure why that is. Let me think about that rotation. A little strange. Target swing top. It's not bad though. Okay. Um, my next step, I'm going to want the, the swing to raise and lower. And so this is why I added a swing arm on it. If we go to the swing base, we can see that our rotation goes from zero to about, we'll move this out to 2,500. <clears throat> Now at the, t let's say, it gets started, by the time it hits 300, it's going pretty good. So at 300, I'm going to start to raise the swing arm. Okay. And I just want to put in a transform. Uh, wanted to add a point there. So it's, it's still going to be at hasn't raised, but then I'm going to give it 200 in the timeline, 200 frames, and I'm going to raise it up as high as I want it. Put it about right there. And then I'm going to copy out that keyframe. I'm going to put it in at, let's go with 1000. Control C, Control V. And then I'm going to copy out the original one because I want it to come all the way back down to where it was. And what did we use here? 300 to 500, so 200. So I'm going to go to 1200. I'm going to paste it in right there. Now. Okay. Good. Okay. Now let's watch it. Get started. Here he goes, and it starts to raise here, raising him up. And it's starting to come down here, and slows a little bit. That spin right there at the end kind of bothers me. That's something I haven't seen before, but okay. So that's not bad for the animation itself. Okay. Um, I also noticed another weird thing when I was uh, when I was putting this together. When I attached the seat to the swing top, I got some weird 
um, some weird constraints where the character was more aligned to the constraint than the seat itself. So what I ended up doing was attaching the seat to the base. Doesn't matter because the constraint's still holding it to the top. Um, let me see if I can re, uh, re show this, re uh, make this happen again. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Attach, parent. We'll do swing top. And let's see. Yeah, see that? Very strange. The character himself is more aligned to the constraint than the seat which is a strange little thing. I'm not sure if it's supposed to have work like that. The way that I got around it, detach the seat and, like I said, attach it to... The only reason I'm attaching it is because I wanted to release the prop in the, um, in the marketplace, and so everything needed to be attached to each other in order to make it as one prop. So attach the seat to the base, and that got rid of this issue. So now the character remains aligned pretty well with the seat, instead of aligned with the constraint, uh, with, yeah, with the, uh, with the generic constraint. Okay, so that's not terrible. It looks pretty good. One of the other things I didn't like at the end, um, he swung, swings around a good bit at the end. Uh, one of the ways that you can fix that is to add a little dampening or damping on the seat itself. If you go into the physics here, um, most of these didn't have a large effect. Uh, the mass, the friction, and the elasticity did not have a large effect. However, when I up the, uh, the damping, I think in one case I used 50. Let's use 35 and see what that looks like. Okay, he's still swinging out to the side. Swings out a lot. In fact, you know, in, in this case, When you're constructing your swing, you might want to make the top a little higher and make the, um, the constraint a little taller so that when he swings out, he's further away from, from the top. But that worked pretty well. See, he's not swinging as much at the, at the end there. So adding some dampening can, or damping can help in that aspect. Um, okay, and like I said, very quickly, the easy way to duplicate this. I'm just control, I have the gizmo on, I hit control, and it swings out. Let's make sure that we're aligned properly. And it has created, that might actually be a little, let's see. Yeah, it's not bad. It's created a duplicate of the seat, and then if I, if I which has its, a generic constraint already attached to it. So now I have two, I select seat one, let's call this seat two. Select them both by using control when you select them in the um, scene uh, the scene gallery. Now hit rotate, hit control, and you're going to rotate them. And now it has copied out two more with constraints already on them. And now I have four seats. Easy peasy. They're already, the constraint is already constrained to the top. If you want, we can add in some more characters. We'll throw Gwen on one of these seats. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see. Oops, little Gwen. Just position her onto a seat. There we go. Give her a seat, uh, a sitting position. That's not bad. And then we'll raise her up a little bit. Pull her forward. There we go. Hands, we could fix that later, but we could also fix it now. Uh, I really hate the, the size of the bones. Something I hope they change in uh, iClone 8. Okay, so going to 
pull her hand out. The other one looks okay. That's fine. Okay, did we attach her? I'm not sure. Take a look. Link. Pick the parent. Now she's attached. If we want, we can add a third character. Um, I, I use three and G3 and G5 characters a lot in, in my tutorials just because they are low poly, which is nice. Uh, Jan is a good one. There we go. Doing the exact same thing with Jana. There she is. When I say low poly, I just mean they're lower poly than um, than the character creator characters. Although I have seen that there's going to be a much lower poly version in the new character creator. Quite excited to see the uh, to see I clone eight in the new character creator. What is that? CC four, I think see all the new stuff that's going on in there okay again I'm gonna position her slide her on to there that's actually not too bad yeah that's good that works for me it's just for a quick example make sure that we link her to the seat uh, we're going by frame so that should look pretty good okay and we could add a fourth one if you want it's up to you just for our now in order to get some slightly different effects one of the things that you might do is change that dampening uh, number all right so seat let's change seat this is seat three and this will be seat four one my here I'm gonna change that to 45 gonna come up and change seat three to 23 okay Let's see how that works. And we got Jana, she's seated backwards on that seat. We would just change her position. I would raise up Gwen a little bit so her butt wasn't sticking through. So change the positions a little bit, but there you go. That's the basic elements of creating a carnival swing using um, generic constraints in order to do some of the easy, uh, some of the easy animation for you. Um, very quickly, I'll show you one of the props that I made. Um, it's on my marketplace, but it's a carnival swing. Created it in Blender. It has these exact same structure. Um, it's using cone constraints. Uh, let me see. Do, 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 custom cone constraints to do the same same job. Um, let me find it. Might take a minute. Do ba do. There we go. Delete out, uh, delete out my characters so we can take a look quickly. Um, the prop has, you know, some pre-made. Okay, there we go. So exact same structure here. We have a base. We have the swing arm. We have the swing top. All of it was um, was modeled inside of Blender, and then you have the actual swings themselves. See here. So you just attach the characters to the swing prop. At the top, this is where the constraints are. I'll show you. Uh, swing shaft, swing control, extension, swing top. So each one of these has a constraint sitting right there at the top, which does the exact same thing that we saw before. Okay. And then, like I said, I believe that there's some pre made animation already on this prop, which does the same thing. It starts rolling. And you see the swings, they're swinging out a little bit. As it goes faster, they swing to the side. Here, there's no constraint on whether the swings can spin around. Uh, it might work for you, it might not. It's up to you. Like I said, you just put a, um, there's a limit on the rotation, so you play with that. And then it slides down back to its original position. 
There we go. So there you have it. That is the swing, the carnival swing with physics constraints. Um, good luck to you and happy eye cloning.